Howdy my totally spooky tubular gamers and we are back for another spooky game ranking video and today's ranking video is going to be on the Evil Dead series. Yes, we are going to be ranking all the games based on the Evil Dead property. Now if you don't know what Evil Dead is, that's kind of lame. But I'm going to bring you up to speed. It's a series of supernatural horror films that were created by Sam Raimi back in the early 80s. There's a couple of these movies and there's even a TV show that was released based on the property. These films are the textbook definition of legendary cult classics, with the third movie, Army of Darkness, being the particular fan favorite. However, Evil Dead as a series is probably one of the most influential horror series in film in general, if not just horror in general. And due to this legendary status, Bruce Campbell has really become just an icon for horror in general, and he'll always have that attached to him, no matter what he says or does in the future. Evil Dead though really has gone on to be an incredibly influential series to movies, music, and especially video games. Whether it was the iconic poster of Army of Darkness or a bunch of Evil Dead quotes, Evil Dead lives on in media even nowadays. And naturally, with a series as beloved as Evil Dead, there have been some video games over the years about the series. As with every licensed video game series, it seems there's some up and there's some down. There's some games that really weren't very good, and then maybe there's some hidden gems in here. Over the years, there's been four main Evil Dead games that have been released, which is kind of surprising. I figured the NES would be just rife with shovelware garbage on Evil Dead, but no, the series only has four main games. There have been a ton of mobile games released over the years, but as usual, we do not include mobile games on this list. Now, all four of these games are of varying quality. They all star Ash slash Bruce Campbell, which is great. And I actually have played all of these games. I remember I played most of them back many, many years ago when I really got into Evil Dead and was watching the movies and playing the games and really just following Evil Dead as a whole. I'd say I'm a pretty decent Evil Dead fan. I'm not like the biggest fan in the world. I'm not a fanatic. I can't tell you all the iconic quotes from Army of Darkness, but I'm a decently big fan. And I did like the TV show Ash vs. Evil Dead. I thought that was pretty cool. And I saw that Evil Dead is actually getting a new game in 2022 titled Evil Dead The Game, real original title there. The game seems to be some kind of upcoming action cooperative game, and I think it's based off Ash vs. Evil Dead. It has some of the characters from it. But I thought, hey, with that game coming out right before it comes out, why don't we rank them? Why don't we rank all the Evil Dead games that have come out so far? So there's going to be a couple criteria that we rank these games off of. How good are the games? Have the games aged well? Are they super obtuse and annoying? Is the camera terrible? Is the gameplay terrible? How is Bruce Campbell? How does it treat the Evil Dead license? We're going to be ranking these games based on a couple things, obviously. Also, the game actually has to be about Evil Dead, not just Ash showing up as a cameo. So no Dead by Daylight or Poker Night 2, but both of those are great also. And as usual, if you have any experience with these games, let me know in the comments, like, share, sub, all that great stuff. And I think that just about does it. We can get started on this list. So what is the worst of the worst? What's the worst Evil Dead game? So here we have The Evil Dead that was released on Commodore 64 back in 1984. Now, I don't have much experience with this game. I don't really have all that much to say about it. It's a very primitive video game that came out in like the early 80s. The game does star Ash Williams, and it does take place in the cabin from the Evil Dead movies. However, it is kind of hard to even tell with how basic these graphics are. You really gotta use your imagination here. The general gameplay really just sees the player going around defeating monsters and closing doors and windows. You get like shovels, shotguns, and axes to kill these monsters with. And then once you've closed everything up and killed all the monsters, you go and destroy the Necronomicon, and that's pretty much it. The gameplay is like, hey, what if we made Hotline Miami, but like 30 years too early? The gameplay is pretty basic, the map is pretty small, and I'm pretty sure you can beat this game in under like 10 minutes. If you absolutely don't know what you're doing, maybe like 20 minutes. It is a game, it is about Evil Dead, and that's pretty much all there is to it. Kind of hard to play nowadays, pretty dated, hard to play like literally, you have to either use a Commodore 64 emulator or actual hardware, and I don't recommend it. Let's get on to the next game. The next game on our list is Evil Dead Hail to the King, which was developed by Heavy Iron Studios, put out by THQ in 2000. Now Hail to the King actually is a continuation from Army of Darkness, taking place many years after where Ash gets his job back at S-Mart. However, Ash has lots of nightmares about the Necronomicon and the Deadites in general, and they really haunt him, and his new woman, Jenny, tries to help him. 
Well, a couple mistakes later, and uh, the evil once again awakens in the woods, and the Necronomicon comes back. The story in the game is fine. I like that it's a continuation of Army of Darkness. I think that is pretty cool. However, the way the plot goes really isn't all that exciting, and it really doesn't do anything all that great. And by the end of it, it just kind of fizzles. There's a whole Ash doppelganger kind of storyline that goes in here with Bad Ash, and I, I just didn't really like that at all. But all that aside, the story was fine enough, and I think it makes decent use of the Evil Dead license. However, when it comes to the gameplay, this game, it ain't all that great. This game plays pretty much like a Resident Evil clone and plays a lot like the horror games that came out during this time. However, for 2000, this was definitely a dated horror game when it went up against games like Dino Crisis and Resident Evil 3 or Code Veronica. It features fixed camera angles, pre-rendered backgrounds, and really clunky combat that I could just never get a hang of. Now, even for the time, this game looked just terrible. Like, it's really hard to see shit in this game. It's one of those games where you don't know what the background is or an item, and it's just really blurry and pixely, especially nowadays. It's the biggest issue with the game is definitely the balancing and the scarcity of resources. Now, I know, yeah, it's a survival horror game. You're supposed to manage your resources. That's a big part of the entire genre. However, this game just goes way overboard to the point that it's just bad balancing. You either have the boomstick, which is very, very little ammunition to the point that there's barely any in the game, or you have Ash's chainsaw, which uses gasoline, which there's not much of in the game either. So the game just ends up being where you don't kill really anything at all because you have to save all your resources for the boss, where you'll just dump all of your resources into the boss because they just take everything. And if you don't do that, you will not defeat the boss, and it's very easy to just basically lock yourself out of beating the game. It's like if they took the frustrating elements of Resident Evil Code Veronica and just up that and made that the whole game. And when you are involved in combat, it's not very good. It's clunky, slow, it's not tense. It's more frustrating and aggravating than anything else. And you really just want to avoid it in general. The puzzles, got nothing really to say about them. I mean, they're pretty standard slash mediocre for a game of this style. When it really comes to the gameplay, I just can't think of anything this game does very well at all. It's probably one of the worst survival horror games I've ever played, which makes me kind of sad that Evil Dead would have one of those, but it is what it is, the game's not very good, and I don't recommend it. But hey, we got two more games. So here we have Evil Dead, A Fistful of Boomstick, that was made by VIS Entertainment, also by THQ in 2003. The game is actually a follow-up to Hail to the King, which is kind of a surprise, and takes place few years later and sees Ash just kind of drinking at a bar when all of a sudden I guess the tape that activated the Necronomicon and the Deadites rising again uh, gets found. Ash thought he got rid of it and hailed to the king but obviously not and they play the tape and the Deadites and evil rise once again and it's up to Ash to stop them. The plot of the game is fine enough decent continuation of evil dead and hail to the king which had a fine enough plot that was really the only good thing about hail to the king so there is that. I mean, the story doesn't really go anywhere all that exciting or unexpected. It plays out pretty much exactly how you would expect, and it's kind of similar to Army of Darkness in a way with how the plot continues. And I can say that Ash is better in this game than the previous one, and he's his old usual self. Now, the gameplay of this game is just odd. It's better than Hail to the King, but it's just strange. It's like a third-person action survival horror game. The game has all the elements of a survival horror game, however it's not a fixed camera, there's a little bit more combat than the normal survival horror game, and the controls are actually alright. But all the other tropes are there, you're still managing resources, which there's plenty of, there's plenty of resources in this game, you don't have to be super scarce, and you still are solving a lot of puzzles and exploring the environment. However, the game is not scary at all, it doesn't even try to be scary, it's more like gory and just kind of horror themed, which is actually pretty similar to Army of Darkness, and I think when it comes to the vibe of the game, they certainly got it down, it is, it does have that Evil Dead vibe. And the gameplay is generally fine enough. It's not great, the combat is super basic, you either just kind of blast them down with the shotgun or minigun, or you do the very basic 1-2-3 chainsaw combo, but the gameplay is serviceable. While the combat is fine enough, some of these levels are questionable. Some of them, like the later levels, just get a little too big and a little too complex for their own good. Like, some of the puzzles are just really obtuse and borderline cryptic and just make very little sense. Like, you pretty much almost need a guide is what you need. 
It's just a little too cryptic and I'm not a fan of most of the puzzles. There's also this ability Ash gets where you can possess deadites and control them around to do certain puzzles or actions and I thought this entire part of the game was just bad. They control terribly, the puzzles are not good. These are the worst puzzles in the game is when you control the deadites and anytime you have to control them I was not having a good time. On top of all this, it's crazy easy to get lost in these levels, especially due to how dark the game is. Like, this is one of, like, the darkest games I've ever played. Like, not in terms of theme or anything like that. Like, literally just black. Just dark. Like, it, it's overly dark for, like, no reason. All in all, this game is a mixed bag. At its best, I mean, it's alright. And at its worst, it's a pretty mediocre budget licensed video game. At least Bruce Campbell's in it, and he's pretty good, but only, like, hardcore Evil Dead fans will find any enjoyment with this. Everyone else can just skip it. And so what do I think is the best Evil Dead game? I think it's Evil Dead Regeneration by Cranky Pants Games and THQ in 2005. Out of all the games on this list, this is really the only game I could actually recommend, and I gotta actually say that this game is pretty alright to good. It has a really interesting premise where it takes place in an alternate reality from the original trilogy, and it actually shows what would have happened if Ash did not get sent back in time at the end of Evil Dead 2. Naturally, after the events of Evil Dead 2, Ash is put in an insane asylum because he's considered crazy just because of everything that happened, and this evil doctor gets his hands on the Necronomicon. So naturally, it's up to Ash to stop him. He actually does team up with this little dude named Sam. He's a half-deadite, half-human, and he's on the same side as Ash and wants to take revenge. And you know, the story actually is pretty good. It really understands Ash slash Bruce Campbell and just kind of how he is in these movies. I think it got the vibe right from the other Evil Dead movies. And it's a really interesting setup. And yeah, it does play out pretty much how you would expect. But I still quite enjoyed it and I liked what it did. I thought Sam was a nice little wrinkle that was thrown in there, and I really like his banter with Ash. I thought that was maybe one of the highlights of the game. And the gameplay, you know, it's actually pretty alright. This doesn't play like some weird survival horror game. They really just went down the hack and slash route, and the game plays like a straight hack and slash. The game is your typical hack and slash affair. You're given a ton of different weapons and a ton of different deadites to fight. You're going to be smashing them up, chopping them up, shooting them down. You get to do a lot to these deadites and you know it's actually a pretty fun time. I mean fighting these guys is alright. The combat system it isn't the most in depth. No it's not. But I mean it's fine enough. It's gory, it's kind of visceral, and it is actually pretty satisfying. There's also no ammunition or item management at all which is for the best. There is this small, really easy puzzle that occasionally shows up also, and then there's interacting with Sam. In most games, when your buddy dies, that's not good. But Sam, he dies all the damn time, and he just comes back. Sometimes you hurl him to get into harder reach areas, sometimes you even get to play as Sam. And you know, I thought he was a good addition to the game, I thought he added a little bit of variety from all the combat encounters, and I can tell that's what he was there for, and you know, I thought it was alright. The game does not reinvent the wheel at all. I wouldn't even say it's like an amazing hack and slash or a great hack and slash, but it is good. It is serviceable and the license really carries it. The game isn't very long. It's like maybe five hours long and the game is kind of underrated. Like I've never heard like anybody ever talk about this game unless they're talking specifically about games that are based on Evil Dead. It's the only game on this list that I can be like, hey, you know what? If you were out at a garage sale and you saw it, or you're buying a bundle of games on eBay and it was in it, give it a try. Why not? Like, there's no way this game's expensive, and it's a pretty decent little time. Pretty much goes without saying, but if you're not a fan of these movies, you're not gonna like any of the games on this list at all. I mean, you wouldn't even have made it to this part of the video, though, if you weren't a fan of the movies, or at least knew about the movies, so there is that. That's really it for this video. Let me know in the comments what your favorite game is, or... Whatever you want to tell me in the comments, I'm here to read it. I know this list was basically just release order, but the Evil Dead games did get better and better. So with that in mind, hopefully that new one that releases soon enough will be the best one of them all. We can only hope. Either way, have a great night, everyone. See ya.